Hello, Alessandro here from MyTokinetics and alessandroferretti.com. Just wanted to give you a quick video uh, to use our MyTokinetics app. I posted a couple of videos showing you how we actually use our app. So as soon as you open the screen, this is what you will see. And the weight is in kilograms, so what if, if we want to uh, get to our weight. Mine at present is around 70, around 74, 75. Uh, my body fat is around 10, uh, 10, 10 to 11. Now, activity. Get lots of questions in relation to activity. So consider that one is something um, that is associated with someone very, very sedentary. So not moving at all, office job, not exercise of any sort, not really walking anywhere. But as if we look at 1.9, as in the level of activity, this is someone, uh, for example, an elite athlete. Um, most of the days during the week training once or twice a day um, in a reasonably high life load environment. So, for example, if someone is training consistently for an Ironman, I would probably look at anything between 1.5 to 1.6 and is still training anything from four to six times a week, but obviously the intensity is lower. You can use it in this way as averaging your week and then set that at that number if your life is reasonably consistent. Otherwise, you can also use as per day. So, for example, in my resting day, not recovering, not in flame, I leave it around 1.1 because I will always, you know, take the dogs out for a walk and do, you know, a couple of things here and there. And if I have, uh, for example, an advanced class in, in, in karate or a very strong high intensity physical activity, then I'll bump it up perhaps to 1.3, 1.4. However, just you will start to get an idea as you use it and as you approach it. So I'm pretty sure that everyone will kind of work it out um, as they go along. So let's assume for me today is a training day, it's an advanced class and I have been also reasonably active. I'll set it at around 1.5. Now protein, this is in grams per kilo mass. My personal sweet spot, it's around 1.5. This is taken in consideration the physical activity. This is taken in consideration the type of training I'm doing um, and my life load. So it will be different for um, most people. Uh, we, we can't really generalize, but we have put some references in our blog uh, to help you in perhaps understanding what would be a starting point for your protein requirements. Um, obviously, if you have an active infection and you're training high intensity, perhaps should go a little bit higher. If you are reasonably sedentary and not really moving a lot, then perhaps you can take it a little bit lower. Now, the last one will be diet FQ. Now, this is the food quotient. Um, I do strongly suggest to perhaps watch the couple of videos explaining what food quotient is. But if you consider the um, respiratory quotient, um, which is the uh, ratio between the two gases that our body tends to use, uh, so the respiratory quotient is a, is a gas exchange ratio of CO2 versus O2. Well, we wanted to uh, look at the FQ of uh, food. So normally the lower is the FQ, the higher is the amount of fat within a certain diet. And the higher is the FQ, perhaps uh, closer to one, the higher is the amount of carbohydrate that, has, um, that is normally utilized from for the body to actually uh, burn as a fuel. This is obviously an assumption made uh, assuming that the body will utilize what we introduce it straight up. Obviously, if you have, for example, a high intensity training session, you can be providing in the diet a very low FQ, yet the body will start to tap 
into carbohydrate for energy sources. On the other hand, even though you, for example, someone has a very high volume type of activity and they are purely relying on carbohydrates, given a certain quantity of proteins for both, um, the body will probably burn a higher proportions of fats regardless, which will access to the actual body store. But what we are talking here is about food quotient. So these are the calculation of the CO2 and oxygen given by a certain proportion of food. So to put it in a very simple manner, I would say that this is a very high strict ketogenic diet on zero carbs and this one is more going towards the ornish high um, level of carbs, low fat Mediterranean diet. So these, this is where we actually space between the two type of diet. What I'd like to bring to your attention um, is the, the, if you see that little dot um, in between the black, red and orange, that is your caloric equivalent uh, given a certain food proportion. We, we, we have found differences in how the body will actually uh, use um, the food uh, substrate in the different macros, but more specifically the um, carbohydrates and the fats. So if we go towards a more ketogenic diet, low carbohydrate diet, <clears throat> you can actually see that the caloric equivalent uh, for someone like me at that degree of exercise with that amount of protein, it's actually around 2,000, uh, perhaps 300, 2,350 kilocalories. If I were to change the proportions of the food and go more towards a higher carbohydrate, lower fat, you can actually see a substantial change in the caloric estimation. As mentioned, this app may be useful uh, for people that would embark on a lower carbohydrate diet. It may be useful for people that perhaps they're trying to control uh, diabetes or insulin resistance, or perhaps they want to optimize how they actually use. In fact, the two main scenarios in which we suggest to use this app will be to set a target, a specific target for your FQ. So for, for example, um, someone wants to use FQ at 0 0.76, which is pretty low carb, high fat, um, in order to um, use a strategic uh, approach to a training, for example, for uh, high volume, low intensity in a in a, in a kind of loading phase away from any competition, for example. The other one is perhaps to look at more of a constant higher fasting glucose level, uh, not due to inflammatory response, uh, but due to excess of carbohydrates within the diet, uh, perhaps looking a little bit of adiposity uh, loss or um, insulin resistance, pre-diabetes or type 2 diabetes and so on. So these are the two scenarios in which uh, we would strongly recommend to use this app. If someone has a pretty fixed diet, mainly carbohydrate, well I wouldn't really see any point in actually using this app because the caloric estimation stays pretty much the same. The error that we have identified in, in the calculation of calories within direct calorimetry is mainly when people dramatically drop the, um, the carbohydrates and increase the level of fats, in which case there is a substantial overestimation as I have shown you um, earlier. So if we take, for example, this side is uh, very uh, low FQ and we keep feeding the body at that degree of FQ, you can actually see the, the calories here, they stay much lower compared to what it would be on a, a slightly higher carbohydrate type of approach. Now, interestingly, if you click on the bottom, this is the uh, ratio of uh, the carbohydrate side. Uh, protein remains pretty uh, fixed, and this will be the actual net carbs. 
I don't tend to look at the caloric uh, intake, it's just the guideline. I tend to prefer to look at the ratio of the weight. So you can actually see that this diet is, is pretty extreme in carbohydrates versus fats. Um, and you know, this is like as little as 2%, so reasonably unrealistic. Um, so if we take a more uh, kind of softer approach in 34, or even slightly higher, then this is more reflecting of um, uh, certain diets that are normally recommended. Um, there is another screen after that, and that gives you a kind of a summary um, where you actually look at the body weight, body fat, activity, protein, uh, and type of diet, and then you can scroll uh, in order to actually show the uh, proportion of the food both in percentage of the grams but also in the actual uh, weight. So if we want to do the same type of exercise for example on a low carbohydrate diet um, and we look at the proportion so this will be the typical 35 grams which is pretty uh, pretty low um, this will be the fats which is 173 uh, and this will be the proteins which stays pretty much unchanged, you can go to the last screen again and have a look at precisely what grams you may want to consider. So once you have found your specific estimation, so you set a specific target, say, right, I would like to uh, prepare for a certain event, which is in six months' time, and you start to do perhaps some um, uh, high-volume, um, low or lower intensity type of training and you want to maximize your body's ability to burn fat as fuel um, with the intent to try to spare glycogen and increase certain uh, fatty acid metabolism and etc then you can actually see that in order for in order to maintain your weight your the equivalent caloric requirement is actually lower. This does not mean that you will lose weight. If you lose weight, it means there is the total energetic value that isn't quite right. Um, this is just a shift in the, in the proportion. And because there, there seems to be a substantial delta between uh, using the same amount of caloric estimation for both uh, high-carb, low-fat and low-carb, high-fat, this is what exactly this app is actually doing in the first place. So it's trying to make sure that the person is not overfeeding by maintaining the same caloric requirements when going from a high carbohydrate, low fat, to a low carbohydrate, high fat. So in this case, the caloric equivalent is about 2,300, as we have uh, seen. Perhaps because of the training, I would probably go slightly higher with the FQ. Um, that still allows the body to have ample amount of substrate to burn for energy. And in this case, you can actually see that things are reasonably realistic. Um, in order to achieve 120 grams of carbs, um, which is a decent amount in order to fulfill the training, still a decent amount of fats. And this uh, could be used in order to maximize uh, fat uh, with a type of training combined with a type of training. Then if the body is starting to embark in a higher intensity, perhaps you want to increase the FQ, but please do notice that as you increase the carbohydrates, either for refueling or whatever might be the reason, the caloric estimation changes and this is once again still for maintenance. If people are using this app in order to perhaps uh, lose uh, body fat, then given a certain amount of FQ, let's assume we go back to our athlete um, trying to prepare for an event, then in this case, I would suggest to perhaps reduce of around 10%, 10 to 15% the actual caloric estimation given 
the FQ that you have already set. So in this specific case, for example, we mentioned the caloric equivalent will be 2,300. Perhaps you want to drop of 2,300 calories the actual uh, estimation. What would that equate to? Well, <clears throat> we tend to maintain the carbs the same and use uh, fat as, as the lever in order to reduce uh, slightly further um, the actual body fat percentage. This will also uh, have other effects within the uh, performance um, which if taken to extreme can definitely be inhibitory of performance. So I would personally not advise, unless someone has tested and trialed this extensively, um, to do this perhaps before an important race. If it's an endurance race, okay, but most of the times there is a time element within the racing. So this is actually quite important. This method does not apply only for athletic performance. So it can also be extended to just normal weight loss or reduction in weight for type 2 diabetics. Obviously, there will be uh, things to bear in mind when approaching uh, general populations as far as making sure that everyone is safe. Personally, we prefer to have a reasonable gradual and step-by-step uh, -step, uh, weight reduction uh, we don't tend to advise uh, to have a very sharp and substantial weight reduction in a reasonably limited amount of time. Normally this could have substantial rebounds uh, and we probably would uh, prefer uh, people to just allow the body to get into a reasonable stable weight and allowing uh, metabolic changes to really, really set in. So I hope that this um, um, video has helped you to understand how to use this app to help you potentially with a better caloric estimation or just total energetic value calculation, especially when embarking on a low carbohydrate, high fat diet or lower carbohydrate, high fat diet, both in sport, but also in order to optimize, optimize metabolic efficiency and or to set very specific metabolic targets. Thank you very much for listening.